Welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we're gonna be comparing some keycaps. Um, of course, the one day that I'm actually gonna film my hands up close is the day I chip one of my uh, nails, like literally five minutes before I started filming, so apologies for that, but uh, on with the show. We're gonna be comparing the DCX profile made by Drop um, to the Cherry profile made by GMK. I guess technically these should be DCX and Cherry, but a ton of people make Cherry, and this is specifically GMK's Cherry, which are derivatives of the original Cherry molds from the 80s. Uh, and DCX is Drop's new profile that is shockingly similar to Cherry. Um, but it's new tooling, and that's very important. Um, Apparently they embarked on this project about two years ago um, from what I've been hearing. Um, and of course we all know what happened in 2020 that delayed everything, um, looking at UGMK. Um, and they gave themselves uh, these eight criteria. So I thought what might be interesting is actually grading DCX drop on those criteria um, as we kind of look at the keycaps here. Both sets are white on black, so we're, you know, even playing field here, old standard set, nothing uh, too revolutionary. But um, I, th I think Drop failed on some of the criteria they gave themselves. Um, so if you're just here to hear what I think between the two, I did a little looking off camera already. They're like a C, you know, uh, on a you know American letter grade system. I, I feel like they pretty definitively hit, um, you know, six out of the eight things they wanted. Um, or I guess more accurately, like five out of the eight things they wanted and kind of got some half points because some of them are future looking and we, we just don't know yet. But I thought it'd be interesting to break out the uh, the macro lens here. And uh, I mean, you can yeah, really see some, some detail there and take a look at uh, these keycaps side by side because they're both basically the same profile. Um, but the, uh, the legends obviously are going to be a question. So um, the, I'm not gonna look at every single keycap in the set, that would be absolutely, um, crazy making. So we're going to um, look at the uh, keycaps on the left side of the keyboard first, like starting with escape and working down, look at backspace and down, uh, and then cherry pick maybe a couple letters. Oh, <laughs> cherry pick, ah. Um, cherry pick a couple of letter keys that I know are trouble spots um, for, for one or the other. So um, the labels on the table are for your convenience. So you can tell which one is which, because again, they're both white on black. ABS sets and oh boy are they similar so um, one of the things that you may not notice right away but is one of the things um, drop uh, number four on drops list of eight things is no external blemishes and to their credit um, GMK has the okay this is my first time filming like this GMK has that little dot right there on the back of the keycap. Now it's called a sprue mark. What that is, is that is a mark from where the plastic flowed in to the mold for the keycap. And they put it on the back, so you never see it, but it's still on top and Drop didn't like that. So, on DCX, there are no visible uh, sprue marks on the customer facing, yes, even the back, sides of the keycap, and of course, especially on the top. They designed all their molds so that all the sprue marks are on the bottom. Let's see, we got one right top center there. That might actually be the only one for the black plastic. And then uh, those are actually probably ejector marks, the, the four white circles we're seeing there. I'm betting that's not, uh, it might be sprue. They might be ejector marks. But regardless, um, on point four, uh, drop nailed it. You can't see any tool marks on the outside. GMK put them, well, Cherry before them, and then GMK put them into place where you can't see them. Um, but point in in uh, Drop's favor. Now looking at the legends on these, um, I've got um, it open. I, I'm, I've got my computer connected to my uh, computer display, so I've got it really big uh, for, for myself just off screen. The texture's looking very similar. The legends, um, what was, let me see here. Uh, point two on Drop's eight point list was meet or exceed the industry leading legend, <laughs> meet or exceed the industry leading legend tolerances. I wonder that is legendary, that's why I got screwed up. Legend tolerances of MT3 keycaps. Now obviously we're comparing uh, GMK here, not, uh, not MT3, but, 
the edges of those letters do look a little sharper. Now I should say this GMK set uh, is the one I use for um, photography. Um, I don't I don't type on this set, so this is about as new as a uh, GMK keycap set can be. So it's not like we're seeing any uh, use markings on these. And the DCX caps literally got here today. So um, as we record on uh, Monday, June twenty seventh, twenty twenty. Um, the legends do look sharper. I'll give them that. Um, the GMK legends, you know, look now I'm looking down at the keycaps actual here. Don't look bad. Um, but when you look at them like this, it is sharper. Um, the one thing I don't like about the DCX caps, and this is something we'll see pretty consistently through the set, um, at least for the ones I've looked at so far, is the kerning. Um, if you're not familiar with your font terms, uh, kerning is the distance between letters. Um, more or less, it's probably more technical than that, but for our purposes today, it's the distance between letters. While on the escape key, the kerning does look pretty even. It's a little wider than I would want it. I, I prefer how close together the, uh, the letters are on the GMK cap, but all said, fine escape cap. Other than the kerning being a little wide, uh, good start. I have, I have no issues with that. Uh, it is a design choice, I would say, uh, so far. Uh, pulling out our tilde key, same deal. Sprue mark on the back of the GMK. No sprue mark on the back of the DCX. I'm not gonna dwell on that though, cause it's the same on pretty much all of them. Um, once again, definitely sharper legends. Um, I also do like how fine the tilde is compared to the GMK one. Uh, the font is a little more delicate and I like that. Uh, now a lot of people, um, it's all preference. I, I'm just, I'm gonna keep saying that over and over again. Uh, some people prefer like the DSA keycap profile because the legends are huge and centered uh, like on MT3 for that matter, drops uh, other profile. Um, I, I like the top left um, Justified Legends that you find on most cherry style uh, keycaps. Um, and I typically like a, a finer uh, font in a lot of these kind of situations. So not only do I, I like the way this keycap looks a little bit better than this one, um, it's got sharper Legends um, as well, but that's a, a pretty impressive technical achievement because that means the mold, you know, did all that correctly the gmk the white plastic had a uh, a, a wider that's a poor choice words here because the plastic is white a um a more broad cavity to flow into than this did now this is gonna be one of those things with time as the drop molds age do they maintain this how often do they replace and retool their molds etc we don't know how old this set of molds from gmk is um you, you, you know uh, the next month's GMK set from 24 months ago might ship and the legends will be way sharper. We don't know. Um, because it's it's a newly retooled or newly made mold. Obviously all DCX are coming out of new molds right now. So um, this keycap looks great. Till day, good one. Our next one here is Tab, which is a more interesting key. Um, tab has the arrows on it on both DCX and GMK. So there's quite a bit going on on this keycap. This is actually one of the example keycaps that Drop used on their um, specs article to show how straight and sharp their legends are. And, you know, really just like the tilde key. Um, uh, yeah, sharper edges, finer overall. Um, the kerning on this one, I actually prefer the kerning on the tab key here. It's tighter. Then the, uh, the GMK is the GMK legend overall is larger too. So really proportionally, the kerning might be quite similar, um, but you've got a finer overall legend on the DCX cap, which is interesting. Yeah, you know, that's pretty good. Let me see if this one relates to any of the, uh, the eight things uh, they wanted to do. Obviously on point two, uh, the, the legend tolerances for MT3. Um, Free from exterior blemishes and perfections, that's point four. Yep. Um, number five, apply meticulous design to every single keycap. This one I would say is good. There are some where I disagree. Um, but overall, I'd say this is a good keycap. Uh, no no complaints here. Uh, next up, we've got caps lock. This is the non stepped caps lock. So let me grab that out of the GMK tray I've got here. 
Okay, so now we're starting to see um, some of the issues that I have with DCX on this cap. I'm gonna grab a pointing object out of my drawer here, so sorry if the camera shakes. Um, so as I'm fumbling to grab a uh, pointing object here, I'll be interested to see how many of you watching this can figure out what I'm about to point out uh, about this keycap that I don't like. And it has to do with our new friend Kerning. Um, you can see, oh, this is a new one, it's got a bent tip, what the heck? I mean, I guess they are supposed to like bend and deflect. That's the whole point of nylon probe tools is that they don't damage what you're poking and prodding at. Um, kerning. So A and P, nice and tight together. P and S and C and A, not good. This is very inconsistent kerning. And then lock as a whole is quite wide compared to A and P. Um, I would say the issue with this cap is actually A and P if they wanted to keep consistent kerning the whole way through. Lock is just a little wide in general for me here. And then we look at the GMK one, the kerning through the caps is much better. Lock, also a little wide. Um, and this again could be because of the blurrier legends that the kerning on this one looks tighter relatively. They might be uh, the, the same, but I, yeah, don't like the kerning on this. This isn't good. Um, legend design on this. And so now the interesting thing here is, is that these are dual shot keycaps. These are dual shot ABS, just like GMK. It's a different ABS. Um, it's a proprietary blend, as far as I know, of ABS. They can't just like go in and change the settings on like a dye sublimated printer um, with, with keycaps like that. This is a mold issue. Now, dual shot molds uh, can be anywhere from starting, you know, at, at in the low thousands of dollars for a mold. And now if they have like four keycaps or like eight copies of a keycap in the same molds so they can, you know, shoot out a whole bunch at once, that's an even more expensive mold. So to fix this is actually a pretty expensive problem. Uh, and they might wait until this mold wears out unless there's like sufficient community um, backlash over the inconsistent kerning on these caps, because why would they spend the, you know, at least thousands of dollars um, to fix this if most people don't care? Now, I care. Um, looking down at the keycap from roughly typing distance that it's sitting in front of me, it is less apparent uh, than it probably is on your screen and certainly on mine, but that's not nothing. Um, they, uh, they there, there was a line in here that uh, uh, really kind of, um, Maybe speaking too soon. Uh, let me find the uh, the exact line from the the article. Um, Making high quality double shot keycap tools or molds is extremely difficult and time consuming. So when we began a new project to make a whole new set of tools for a new profile, we decided to do it behind closed doors to spare community members from the roller coaster of unexpected delays. Is the whole paragraph. Um, but that first half there that they learned that it's extremely difficult and time consuming, referencing the pre previous paragraph about making MT3. If you learned your lesson during MT3, why did you let this happen? Okay, that's my question. Um, they, in their amazing specs for DCX article, they've actually got a, um, a screenshot from what I think is an optical measurement system, looking at the control key and looking for the deviation from what they expected. Um, and the control key is an interesting one. We're gonna be coming back to the control key. I'm very curious what they were judging against that made this inconsistent kerning okay. Because again, lock is fine. It's a little wide for my taste, but it's fine. Curious uh, about this. Was this a manufacturing limitation? Could they not get you know this gap here any smaller or this gap here? Whereas this is two straight lines, so they can be quite close together. Did they maybe need to go back to the drawing board on tooling? Personally, again, in this scenario, I would have made the gap between A and P the same size as these others to at least make it consistent. Um, you know, it, it's not pushing to the bleeding edge of what's possible with the mold. I would favor consistency. So not a huge fan of this keycap. Um, fine, it's fine. Again, from typing distance, eh, you know, no big deal. But I feel they could have done better. All right, now we're looking at uh, left shift. This one I might not. <laughs> Uh, be able to get them completely both on screen. So I'm just gonna make sure the legend for both is on screen and it's clear here, um, you know, which is which, I would assume even though it's over the, the middle line. And just a terrible legend on this one. So inconsistent on the kerning. 
And once again, you know, we see here where the H and the I have two vertical lines next to each other, nice and tight kerning. This one's pretty forgivable, that's not bad, but then woof, between F and T, it's like the T's running away from the rest of the word. And again, if you couldn't make that gap there any smaller, I would argue make, you make the rest of these bigger to match. You look at what uh, GMK did here, the crossbars on the F and the T are much shorter than on DCX. And thus the, uh, the kerning looks more consistent. Now, as we've been seeing this whole time, it is a blurrier and a more bold legend than this. But you think back to the tab key, these are much closer in size than the two tab key legends were. So uh, GMK figured out what the trade-off was or, you know, Cherry did in the 80s, one of the two. And DCX, not so good, man. This F looks bad. Uh, it's like shift to, it's not great. Um, Arrow looks fantastic. You know, coming back to the sharp new molds that they have, that looks, yeah, absolutely great. Even on this wider key, you can see the sprue mark peeking up on the back there. No sprue mark on this one. Let's actually uh, flip this over before we move on to the the next key here. Yeah, all the sprues are on the bottom, just like they said, so. Yeah, um, I would be interested to know what trade-offs they had to make to accomplish that. Uh, they don't mention that, it's just something that they really wanted. They didn't want uh, uh, customer-facing sprue marks, even if they're on the back, so. Good for them, not so good legend. And uh, not to imply that um, I don't think that moving all the sprues to the bottom made the legends uh, kerning poor. That, that's, I think that's a legend design thing. I didn't mean to correlate those two. Uh, we're gonna move over to the right half of the keyboard before we get to the bottom row. Um, so let's look at backspace. A lot of letters on this one, so ample opportunity for the kerning not to be great. So let's take a look. This is not one of the ones I had spot checked so far. This legend's really blurry on this GMK one. The uh, the shape on the inside of the A there is quite poor. It's much better on this letter, so that does seem to be a tool break-in issue. This one's kind of uh, blobby. This one's not amazing shape, but looks more intentionally shaped. The closing on the E is quite tight compared to the DCX one. Um, and you know, the arrow, you know, just the, it's a blurrier legend overall. I think I'll stop calling that out at this point because it seems to be pretty consistent. Um, kerning on this one, B and A, not good. Everything else looks at least consistent. Interesting on this key, we have no letters where there's two vertical lines next to each other like we had been seeing. That's really interesting. I wonder if it's a minimum wall thickness thing that was driving their design decisions. Um, because a lot of the places we see really tight kerning is on straight land. There's none here. B and A are a little far apart. Rest of the word's pretty good. And looking down at the key from using um, usage distance, I should say, um, looks fine. So not good, much less egregious than some of the others. Good key overall. Um, next one down is pipe slash. We're not going to look at that. We're just going to probably see more of the same we saw in the tilde. Um, let's look at the return key. Next, this is going to be another one where part of the return key is going to be off screen, but not the interesting part. I've got my macro lens just about as close to the table as I can get for these so we get as much detail as possible. So I hope that trade off is worthwhile as I expected it to be. Um, I know I said I'd stop saying it, but boy, is it obvious on the uh, the bend in that uh, return, just how big and fuzzy uh, some of these legends are. This is actually one of the sharper ones, but it is much uh, chunkier than the, uh, the line on the arrow here. Overall kerning, great on this, actually. The T feels a little, maybe a little spread. Um, so interesting, the T seems to be a problem letter for them. Um, but overall, this is a good one. Uh, no, no qualms. This. I've just kind of been looking at the top texture. I haven't been commenting on it. The top texture looks pretty similar. My lighting um, is not perfect for this kind of setup. I put this together pretty quickly because uh, I was excited about this video idea. Um, in person, the texture looks quite similar. The GMK, and this actually shows it pretty well. The GMK is a little grainier 
you can see here like the grain size in the keycap and maybe I'll digitally zoom in a bit feels bigger here it feels more fine that could be a mold age thing as well um, or it could have been a conscious decision to have a more finely textured uh, mold for for these so um, this is a fine key I think this is great um, T a little weird but I'm not gonna dock at any points um, overall it's it's fine I'm, I'm here to nitpick so I'm going to but return is a-okay no qualms yeah let's move on to the bottom row the bottom row has some interesting stuff um, let's just go to control I've kind of been hinting at it this whole time controls bad key this is not good um, control seemingly just gets like further far apart the further you go down the key and you know what I'm blaming the T again um, I think GMK figured out at some point Cherry figured out at some point that you really need a short crossbar on um, on the T like we have here DCX their T is much more proportional this you know <laughs> I think if you're handwriting that wouldn't be a very acceptable T the crossbars is so short I've never noticed that before I looked at these today um, I, I love making videos where I learned something too but T really messes this up um, I also feel like the C could be a little closer to the O here but again it might be minimum thickness um, for their molds they just couldn't do it R and O feel a little uh, spaced as well O and L nice and tight O and L are great O and N are pretty good I'm gonna blame T this is uh, um, a discord I'm in one of my friends noticed this in the pictures or renders whichever they were and this is actually the one that if you go to the amazing specs for DCX article on Drops website, I'll, I'll have a link to it. Um, this is the one they show as under the metrology tool as like being very well uh, in spec, um, but calling out with red arrows where what was probably an earlier prototype deviated. So this is what they intended to do, that means. Th this is what they had designed, which is what leads me to believe that it's a minimum thickness thing that they got a spec from their manufacturing partner that you can't have any sections of color smaller than, you know, blank. And GMK almost certainly has the same issue, though their minimum wall thickness does seem to be lower, like that. It's hard to tell how much that is mold bleed. Um, yeah, really, I'd be interested to know for a fact that I had like a brand new mold set of GMK keycaps. And I'd probably buy an extra set to keep as a reference because like that could be mold bleed. It could be that they have refined their process or to one of drops other points um, in their eight point rubric they gave um, point six, a common tape proprietary blends of high quality resins. It could be a flow issue where they need slightly larger minimum thicknesses for some of the plastic. Um, um, what, what do they call them? Blends uh, that they want to run. You know, it, it could be a little bit of both. It could be that they just need to redesign their legends. And like I talked about on the shift key, I believe this is not an easy fix. This is a recreation of the mold to fix that problem. This is one of the ones where when I look down at typing distance, I can tell the spacing's funny on this one. GMK looks very natural, even with the tiny little T-bars. Like I just said, I've never noticed before today when I pulled this out. Um, it looks totally normal. That's very, very interesting to me. Um, so yeah, bad key cap, not a fan of that one. Uh, next we're gonna look at alt, which is an interesting one because of what we've learned about vertical letters and um, the, the T crossbar so far, but it's also quite short. So any kerning issues will not show up as readily. <laughs> the T kind of looks like it's running away. Over here, totally fine, tiny crossbar. Also, if you look at like how close together the base of these letters are compared to these ones, the A and the L, fine. T, not proportional. These are, um, the A and the L are, are definitely still closer together on the GMK one, but the T is proportionally much closer than the T on the DCXs. So this one's fine. Um, it's not long enough to terribly matter. But I think once you notice this lowercase t issue with the DCX ones, it's, it's kind of hard to unnotice. Cause like even looking down at these alt keycaps at typing distance, not through my monitor, you can tell that that t kind of looks like it's running away a little bit. And GMK, while the t maybe looks a little funny, you know, maybe not like how you would write a t or how a t would look as rendered on a uh, on a computer screen. 
the, the, the kerning looks right. So I guess what matters more to you will make the decision here on, yeah, if you care about that or not. So, uh, fine, keycap, not great, just fine. Uh, now we have a small issue here. Um, my GMK white on black set does not have super keys, it has code keys, um, and DCX comes with super keys, not code keys. So, do I have any GMK sets that say super on them? Um, well, let, let me just look at, at super here. Well, uh, here, we, we won't have a side-by-side, -side, but let me pull the, the DCX super in so you can see it. This would be your OS key. And just, you know, pretend there's a, a GMK one there. Once again, you know, we've got two vertical lines here and here, and these are nice and close together. P and E look really far apart, you know, because proportionally there's kind of like these two cones that are meeting, if you will. So there's the minimum thickness that they can achieve is only there momentarily before it spreads back out again. So visually it looks much further apart, even though the actual distance between the P and the E and the U and the P might be quite similar. Um, so it makes, it does make the kerning look just a little funny on this. It makes the E look quite isolated, I would say is, is the actual result of that. Because, you know, SUP through here, you don't really have enough information to detect a pattern or not. But then the E looks a little spacey on, on both sides. Less spacey on the R side, where again, that wall is vertical. So, interesting. That's a, that's a C. That's a C grade on that key cap. Um, all right, let's look at some troublesome alpha keys. Uh, Q is one that is often noted as not being one of uh, GMK's stronger keys. It's their Q legend, so let's pull out Q here. And I'm sure everyone has like a pet keycap that annoys them about GMK. I'm not going to get to all these. I'm sorry. There will be lots of pictures online, I'm sure. You can really tell how much sharper this legend is than this one. It almost looks like my camera's out of focus on the GMK keycap, uh, which is quite interesting. Stubbier tails, uh, again, than the DCX one. Now, again, also hard to tell if that's mold bleed or if that's by design. Given how short the arms are on the lowercase t, I'm willing to bet that's at least mostly by design, could be a little bit of old bleed, but um, probably mostly by design. Um, yeah, Q looks great. The, the Q on the GMK is also, it feels a little far into the corner. That could be because the um, the legend is just larger as well, or uh, thicker at least. Um, yeah, that's a good key cap. They did a good Q. That's a good job on that one. Uh, right next to Q, we're going to grab W. That's also a, uh, a known troublemaker in the, uh, the GMK world. Um, you know, really more of the same as the Q, really. Interestingly, this W looks bigger than the GMK one, I think just because it's wider. You can see how far apart the three points on the top of the W are comparatively between the two. Um, I don't know why people think the W on GMK is weird. I just see it brought up a lot during critiques of GMK is that their, their W is funny. I think it looks fine. The line weight, I guess, is a little inconsistent. The outer lines are thicker than the inner lines. That could just be a symptom of them uh, squishing it a little bit, though. You know, you, you need to give up room somewhere for the plastic to flow in. Um, speaking of, I mean, nice, sharp inner corners on these. I believe that was also mentioned on one of their goals. Well, I guess the the legend thing. Somewhere in one of their articles, they specifically mention um, sharp corners, which this does achieve. Um, those look quite good. I did notice when I was grabbing these, I hadn't shown you the underside of these yet. Um, side by side, at least. Um, so you can see just a, a difference in the manufacturing process here. It looks like, to me... These have a really similar internal structure. Um, you'll notice that the stem is the inverted color, and that just has to do with mold construction more than anything, and also order of injection. Um, yeah, neither of these are bad. You would look at the DCX and go, oh, this is cleaner. It, it really is just a difference in mold design, you know, um, how each company chooses to do um, their injection stages.
yeah, no qualms with either. The DCX does look more, uh, I guess, modern would be the word I would use. It looks like it's with a more matured process, which it is. Again, GMK's molds are based off of uh, Cherry's molds from the 80s. Um, one of my pet keys we're going to look at is the two, specifically the at sign. The at sign is a very, very tight legend. Um, so this, this might be a good spot for DCX to shine. And boy, does it... <laughs> The, yeah, this is a pretty wonky looking at symbol. Our line thickness gets real narrow right there. The whole A is kind of, not just like tilted, almost like warped backwards, which is quite interesting. Um, and our, our shiny new DCX mold looks fantastic. Very consistent line weight um, all the way through. I guess it actually gets a little thin on the white part up here. The tail's quite good. Um, Hmm, yeah, it, the, the black part gets thin on GMK, the white part gets thin on DCX. It's very interesting. Overall, I would say this is a better legend though, um, which could be due to newer molds or better legend design or both. For all we know, if GMK had a, you know, a brand new tooled set of molds, this would look a lot better. I, I just do not know. I, I almost kind of want to pick through all my GMK sets after this and see if I can discern any legend differences. Neat. So good keycap, DCX. Good job. Yeah, man, that T, that's a problem for them. That's really interesting. Um, I remember when I first saw these DCX caps, I was like, oh, the font kind of looks like Comic Sans. Um, Comic Sans, pretty famous font, um, obviously. It's kind of a, a joke font, depending uh, when you grew up, I suppose. Um, Comic Sans is really characterized by its rounded off ends. And when I thought that, I was like, well, why do I think that? Because GMK also has, you know, rounded off ends. I honestly think what it might be is the more dramatic uh, crossbars and the more open ends on some of these letters just makes it look a little more Comic Sans-y. Obviously Comic Sans has like, you know, uh, kind of swooping curves in places you wouldn't put them. It, it doesn't actually look like Comic Sans, but it just kind of, uh, had that sort of vibe to me. I wonder if that's it, that the, um, you know, those letters are, are just that much a little bit different. Really interesting here how blobby this R is on the bottom uh, compared to the top. This gets much thicker down here. That does not seem like design. I'm willing to bet that that's mold bleed or mold age. Um, you also see the whiteness of the plastic. The GMK looks just a little more bright white than this one on my screen. When I look down at them, it is even more apparent that this seems like a slightly warmer white than this. Um, or slightly duller white, maybe. It looks warmer to my eyes when I look at the keys. It looks duller when I look at it in the camera. So I'm just trying to paint you a word picture here. But um, yeah, that's interesting. I'm sure compared to you know the rest of the keycap set being black, both of these are gonna look nice bright um, on your on your keyboard. So um, that's interesting seeing the uh, the difference with the the color. I mean, this is interesting and I think pretty definitive um, for the kerning issues being by design on DCX. I've got three shift keys here of different sizes, two with the icon. Uh, one without, all of them have that T that's running away. Far T, far T, far T. Every single one of these. Even on this one, or on, uh, sorry, this one, put it at the wrong end of the screen. Even on this one where like space on the top of the keycap is at a premium, something about that minimum distance here is driving their design. And I really think if they shortened these crossbars by somewhere between 25 and, I mean, 50% sounds extreme, but there's like little nubbins on GMK. If they, if they shortened that crossbar by a pretty considerable margin, I think it would smarten up the way their uh, legends look quite a bit, because this, this is not good kerning. And obviously when you're working with a digital font on a computer, kerning is not a problem because it's digital. You just, you know, your pixels can be wherever you want your pixels, but when you're making a physical object, I'm not blaming, you know, uh, GMK for, um, you know, not being able to break the laws of physics. I'm, I'm saying they should have taken this into consideration in their design because whenever you make a physical product, you have to play in the space, so to speak. 
and they didn't do it with their T and their F. Um, like, oh God, yeah, like you can see the I and the F here, that distance, the F and the T are so much further apart. Um, arrows look great, legend sharpness is great, but man, that's disappointing. That's that's a str strong weakness, a strong weakness, a big weakness. <laughs> That didn't make any sense. A big weakness in their uh, in their design. Uh, while we're at it here, let me pull the uh, 1.5U control. Same story. Really weird kerning as you get further and further into the word, just like on the 1.25U one. Um, yeah. So let, let let me kind of wrap up here. I've been talking for uh, you know 40 minutes here about keycaps, but what else is new? Um, grading drop on their own rubric. Uh, point one was to create a cylindrical profile keycap to widen our keycap offerings. They clearly succeeded. They created a cylindrical profile keycap and they now have more offerings than they did before. So one point for uh, drop, good job. Two, meet or exceed the industry leading legend tolerances of MT3 keycaps. Now that's kind of an iffy one. I'm not going to give them this point, but I also don't know what they mean by industry leading legend tolerances. They can mean something different. To me, I'm grading that as, are their legends good? And no, they're not. They're not consistent enough. Um, for the majority of keys, it's fine, but alpha keys are easy. Alpha keys are not the problem. You have a huge canvas on which to put it, um, but you need to do the whole package, and that lowercase t issue is just killing them. Um, I don't know if they're overweighting, um, you know, tolerances for these proprietary resin blends that they're looking for, or what it is, but they don't, they don't get point two from me. I don't think um, these are good legends. Maybe compared to MT3, they're fine. I don't have a lot of experience with MT3. Um, but if that's the standard they're holding themselves to for a new product, that's pretty disappointing. Uh, point three, make premium weighted keycaps to ensure durability, longevity, and desirable acoustics. I forgot about that, but I actually have a micro scale in my workbench here because I've been wanting to weigh keycaps so let's actually find out as I shut my HDMI cable in the drawer for like the 30th time this video <gasps> are these puck cells no they're free goes womp womp they looked like puck cells for a second eh just fits in there okay cool let us weigh I'm gonna flip back to the top tray of the DCX here that was much more interesting tray in terms of common keycaps. Uh, let's just start with Escape. Let's just grab a classic 1U. Nothing crazy. We are 1.32 grams. And we'll our GMK one here. 1.14 grams. It is heavier. So I guess they achieved that. Um, a more premium weighted keycaps. Uh, generally speaking, in the keyboard hobby, when someone says premium weight, they mean heavier. Uh, there you go. Do with that information as you will. Let me weigh uh, uh, backspace. That's a pretty big key. It's a tall profile. It's a long key. All right, so DCX. 263 grams. GMK. 236 grams. Lighter again. Okay, so I'm gonna give them that point. Um, they do have uh, probably what they were calling premium weight keycaps. Provide a finished product that is free from exterior blemishes and imperfections. I am not gonna give them this point because I'm calling legend issues imperfections. From a manufacturing standpoint, if they had specified in that way, certainly these have no sprues on the outside. There's no indication of their manufacturing processes on the outside of the keycap. They would have gotten that. So to be fair, I'm gonna give them a half point here but I do not think um, these are free from blemishes and imperfections. Those legends on the modifiers are not good. Um, five, apply meticulous design to every single keycap. Nope, no point. You clearly did not do that for every single keycap. You may have tried, but you did not succeed. Um, six, accommodate proprietary blends of high quality resins. I'm gonna assume that's a point um, because I, I'm not in their manufacturing chain. I have no idea what resins they are or are not using, but I assume that they designed for that. I'm, I'm curious to know, um, this is my own commentary. They haven't said anything about this. I'm curious to know if that means um, they're worried about like durability during shortages of stuff because like GMK, one of their main issues, well, they've, <laughs> they've gone through a variety of issues. 
one of their issues through the course of 2020 till now was resin shortages and i think they single source their resins um or at least they have very high standards for their resins so part of me wonders if 0.6 from drop there is um they want to be able to accommodate multiple blends of resins both so they can do i think they mentioned pbt at some point these are abs but also support other abs's so if they can't get a certain kind, they're not stuck because multiple times in their marketing, they promise four to six month turnaround on these, which is much faster than GMK is at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna assume six is correct. Be able to produce the keycaps efficiently at scale. That's yet to be seen. I'm gonna give them the point. Drops logistics are some of the best. Um, they, they When they say they're gonna deliver something, they generally do, save for GMK delays. Um, so yeah, uh, and then eight offer Mac system compatibility. Um, they do have kits that have the Mac legends on the keycaps. So I would also say they've succeeded there. So uh, that, that breakdown is kind of why I gave them a C on these. They, they're good keycaps. They're, they're fine keycaps for their price, especially they are fine keycaps. They've got, I think like seven colorways. Uh, let me pull up the uh, page here. As of recording this right now, they've got six, um, on the page um it looks like some of them are even in stock so uh, pretty rad um including a dolch set which actually looks like the colors are pretty decent i didn't order the dolch because i've already got two dolch sets in gmk um, i bought these ones uh mostly to make content about them um and also i want to record a sound test between the two i'm curious to see how that goes so that'll be in a separate video though this one's already long enough um so yeah that's kind of why i gave him a c on this whole thing is using the rubric of their own design i think they really dropped the ball in the legends and having done this comparison with y'all here i think the lowercase letters um, that have bars on them are a big part of the problem as well as their minimum distances um, between rounded letters versus vertical walled letters um that yeah you know it's too bad um because they had what could be really good here and i think still is good it's not great and as I said earlier, once their molds wear out, they might fix this. Um, they, they may you know, go back to the drawing board on some of these legends after the feedback, including the mine that I'm giving in this moment right now and make their legends better because they're just not there right now. Their manufacturing is clearly good with the no tool marks on top. So it's really on them at this point to uh, fix those issues, fix their kerning specifically because their sharpness is awesome the color is consistent finish is good um but uh yeah so uh i'm going to uh give uh here which I, i'm improving this right now so i'm just gonna fumble but i'm gonna keep talking so you know the video isn't isn't over i i'm gonna give uh drop dcx a c that's the grade they get for me. It's fine, it's good, no one's gonna yell at you for it, but you definitely could do better. And I hope they do, because we need more keycap options. It'd be great to see. GMK um, is in a better spot now than they have been in some time. They're shipping quite a few sets. Um, from what I've heard, obviously they don't announce a lot of these things publicly, um, but from what I've heard, they finally have the staffing for their new production facility they built during the course of 2020, and are working on training those people up and getting those machines going. So. That's great news, and just in, I, I didn't mention the drama with the DCX and the MT2 name and everything with this, but interestingly, uh, MT new, um, spelled M-T-N-U, um, the new keycap profile that Matteo, Matt3O, I'm never sure how to read that, um, Matteo, M-A-T-T-3-0, 3-O, damn it, <laughs> um, his new profile, um, which is a shorter version of MT3, is actually going to be manufactured by GMK. How about that? So, uh, interesting times in the keycap world. I wish Drop had done better with the modifier legends, but overall, obviously, these are pretty good value keycaps. So, there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Once I have the sound test comparison between DCX and GMK up, I'll link to it uh, here so you can uh, view that as well. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments or any comments about my comments let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you liked the video, drop it a like. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.